What's going on everybody? It's Patrick from Minton Outdoors. Come back. We're going to talk about when, why you should cut a camping trip short. What's going on everybody? This is Patrick, Mid-10 Outdoors. How is my outdoor crew doing? I hope this video is finding you well. Um, okay, so the title of the video, when and where, when and why should you cut a trip short? Now I'm going to give you a couple of reasons. Actually, there's probably three good reasons that I'm going to throw out there. One of them I have done three times actually. The other two, I've never had to do that. I'm knocking on some wood. I've never had to do that. <clears throat> okay. So let's get into number one. Number one, death in the family while you're on the trip. It can happen. It can happen in a heartbeat. Um, I, I mean, there's a no-brainer there. You got to pack up and come home. It doesn't matter where you are. Um, you know, uh, that you just have to pull the plug um, and get back home. Work your way back home anyway. It depends on how far away from home you are. Um, I can just imagine if you're an East Coaster and you're on the West Coast and you have to get back home, you know, maybe you fly back home. Maybe you do whatever you got to to get back home. Generally speaking, though, when it comes to the death of a loved one, the funeral usually won't be the next day. It's usually a few days out, so you have time to get home. Um, but that, that's, that's probably the number one reason you would uh, cut one short. Number two reason, you get sick. Now, I've had a sniffly nose camping, caught one camping several times in the winter lived with it and kept on going but there's a point in time where you can't just continue to camp on and that's if you get a bad case of well the trots or the other thing now i like i said i've been i've have caught a cold or started a cold camping and i lived through it and i did fine i have never had the other problem while camping i don't want it camping oh my god i couldn't imagine especially you know even even if you're backpacking or something you've got to get yourself out i just couldn't imagine that i really couldn't um i, I just i think that could be one of the worst times ever is camping far away from home backpacking whatever and that hits i mean oh my god i i, I feel for people that might, you know, have had that problem. It's not funny, I know. I just couldn't imagine having that kind of problem on a trip, camping trip especially. Um, it'd just be so miserable. Oh my God. I just couldn't imagine. Can't fathom it. If you have, without a lot of details, just say, I've had that problem. <laughs> All right, let's go to number three. Okay, so the third and final reason and I've had this happen three times now, is storms, thunderstorms, severe weather, that kind of stuff. So let's talk about that. I've had three times I've, I've actually torn down camp and left because of weather. The first one was probably, Chase was probably in middle school. I know he was in Boy Scouts. Me and him had gone to Ohio for a weekend trip, left out because we're, uh, see, I keep thinking he was out of school because we left on a Friday. Um, anyway, got up there, first night was great, it was an awesome trip. The second day, or the that Saturday, we were doing our thing, doing all the stuff around. And... Um, Sitting around camp that afternoon, we were tired, you know, we'd been running hard all day. He had started a fire with one hand. He'd been building stuff. I'd been building stuff. I'd been doing stuff. 
is that Dave Canterbury's um, one of his bushcrafting things. So we went up for it for the weekend. It was when you could go up for the weekend. I think he's doing it again now. If you ever get a chance to go, it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, back then I still have it. I have it put up in a, in a you know, it's getting bad out bag so I can pull out a particular radio. It's a hand crank. We can sit there and listen to it. We had that the whole weekend. And when we were sitting around camp, didn't have much to do. I knew he would get bored, so I'd crank it up and we'd listen to some music. Well, that afternoon, I cranked it up and started listening to radio station. Radio station kicked in and said, hey, we got bad weather coming. Uh, and at that point, he was, not, he was not around the tent or anything. I think he was out screwing around. And um, I thought, I'm going to try to pull up their local weather Noah ready or Noah weather and I did and what I heard I didn't like there was a very high po possibility of tornadoes sorry about that so I rounded him up told him what was going on and like I said he was in scouts at this point and I said dude we can do one of two things we can hang it out here we can weather the storm Get up tomorrow morning, pack everything up, leave, you know, hope to God we miss all the, hopefully it doesn't happen. Or we can throw all this stuff in the truck and we can start trying to get out of here. Now I knew good and well it was going to take a good bit to get together and get everything in the truck. And it did, it took a few minutes, it took about an hour, even with me and him. And... Um, we got out of there, but we ran right into it, and I was behind. I will never forget this. I mean, I can remember it plain as day. Um, we were behind a semi-truck till we got to almost Cincinnati, and so we drove through the main heart of the storm. I was able to get some weather uh, on my phone, and I think back then I had a BlackBerry or something. I can't remember. It didn't seem like I had... Um, radar of any kind but I was able to kind of figure out what was going on knew we were kind of in a bad situation but we weren't in the terribly bad situation as I told him as we were driving when he saw lightning I said if you see a cone let me know anyway got home we were fine the next one was actually a rain event it had rained from the time I got there to the time I left. It was not going to stop raining until I was going to leave originally. And that's when I went to the Smoky Mountains. It rained and rained and rained. It never stopped raining. Um, and just everything was wet. I mean, inside of the tent was not wet. Inside the tent was dry. Um, everything was dry inside the tent. The, the um, rain fly was a little sketch. Got a little wet with it. Um, I don't know what happened with that thing, but it just would not stop the water. Um, so we, um, I decided then I'm, I'm going to pack it up and leave a day early. And I did. I hated it, but I'm glad I did because it, it, it didn't end up stop raining there until that evening. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't wait for that to finish before I came home. Um. So I, I still had to dry a tent out one way or the other. I knew that was going to happen. The third time was last YouTuber meetup. Uh, I had stayed in uh, um, um, East Tennessee, excuse me, and I'd been keeping up with the weather on Saturday morning and started pulling up stuff for my area and where I was going to be. And they were predicting weather like early morning where I was going to be at. So I, I'm camp, you know, got camp set up and everything. And I thought, I'll check it again before I go to bed. And I checked it again before I went to bed. Said the rain stuff would move in about 9 o'clock. I was like, you know what? I don't want to have to dry everything out. So let's plan on getting up super early getting out, getting gone. And I did that. And that was the time of year it was already starting to get 
it was starting to be dark later in the morning. Um, matter of fact, I think it was like eight o'clock before it actually got good, or it may have been seven o'clock before it got good in daylight. So, knowing me, I didn't, I didn't sleep worth a darn that night, and I woke up, and it was like I don't know. I had to go to the bathroom. It was like 4:45. I went, used the bathroom, came back, and I thought, do I tear down now to keep from having to tear down in the rain? Just forego cooking, just forego everything, throw everything in the truck, haul tail and go. And that's what I did. It was still dark when I left the campground. I did everything I could to be extremely quiet, not make a bunch of noise, which is kind of hard to do when you're by yourself. You um, have mobility issues and, um, well, you were trying to get done, but I did. So, the three things I would consider breaking camp early for, one, death in the family, two, illness on your behalf, maybe at home. Maybe your wife's with kids and she gets sick um, and you have to run home. You have to go home because, you know, she's sick. Kids are fending for themselves and trying to cook pasta meals and stuff. Whew. Anyway. Um, or bad, bad weather. Um, so that would be my three reasons to break down early. Let me know if you have a reason. Let me know if you've had to do either of the above of the three. And um, I look back at it and say, yeah, it was, it was the right call. It was the right call. Especially when I left early from Roan Mountain. I literally ran into rain around Crossville. I, when I say I ran into rain, I was going around 35, 40 miles an hour on the interstate. That's as fast as I could go. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get something out of it. Please leave your info down at the bottom of what you had to go through or what, why you had to leave early. And uh, let's talk about it. We'll see you on the next one, everybody. Be prepared. <music>